Well, welcome to this webinar. Um, I'm Jeff Mathias. I'm a uh, one of the co-chairs co of the um, outcome mapping learning, uh, learning community. Um, and with, uh, with us today, we have uh, Simon Hearn and Surinder Singh and James Montgomery, as well as Mariam Smith, who's one of the other um, one of the other stewards. Before we do anything else, Simon, do you want to just quickly say hello and um, tell us who you are? Yep. Hi, I'm Simon Hearn. I'm the coordinator of the Outcome Mapping Learning Community. Um, it's great to see you all. Uh, welcome to our third webinar in the series uh, this year. Um, we, we started off in, uh, in, in May, I think it was beginning of May. And uh, this is the third. We're going to be introducing a few more webinars um, over the next month or so, and they will stretch towards the end of the year. Um, so yeah, really pleased that, um, that, that uh, James and Surrender have joined us uh, in this one. Thank, thanks, Simon. Um, um, and for me, this is, this is just fantastic. This is almost a dream to get um, Surrender and James onto a webinar talking. You know, I think a lot of the time, the rest of us, we think about development and we throw ideas around. People like Surrender and James actually do it. They do the hard yards out there of, of actually making things happen. Um, First, I'll just get you to say, uh, um, introduce yourself, James. James is from Australia. Australians have trouble with rugby and cricket, but James is a good guy. James, tell us about yourself. Thanks, Jeff, and hello, everyone. Yeah, so my name's James Montgomery. I'm based in Melbourne, Australia. I work for Tier Fund Australia. I'm an international program officer with Tier Fund and currently looking after projects in Afghanistan, as well as Nepal and India. That's how I interact with MGVS. Um, usually my work would involve me traveling and visiting partners in those countries. At the moment, the Australian government has been very strict with travel restrictions. Um, so that's not quite happening at the moment, but still able to touch base with partners over, over Zoom and, and hear how the work's going. Thanks, James. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and obviously uh, COVID is a much bigger deal for Surrender than everyone else. Uh, Surrender, just quickly say hello and how, how's it going in Dehradun where you are? <clears throat> hello, so I'm uh, Surinder Singh and uh, um, our NGO name is Masuri Grami Vikas Samiti and in short you can say MGVS. Uh, I am coordinator uh, and manager of uh, this uh, our NGO and uh, I'm working since uh, 1980. Uh, 83 in this organization and uh, at present we are uh, working in a two district Terry uh, Garwal and Uttarkasi yes great thanks Surinda and I bet no one else here can match 38 years in a single organization I think you get the record for that Surinda um, okay so just to um, Simon, our, our um, coordinator and co-host, has, has got you all muted, but we'd love to take your questions. So as Surinder and James are talking, please throw your questions in. And I'm gonna run this as a kind of interview. I'm gonna ask Surinder and James alternately various questions about outcome mapping and how it was. Um, in the middle of this, I'm just gonna flick onto some slides just to give you some pictures of where, where we are and what, what, we're, what, we're what we're talking about. But Surinda and James, you just carry on saying what, what, what you are. We're not, they're not talking exactly to the slides, but for all, all of you participants, the slides are there just to give us an idea of what it looks like, what kids and governance and people at health posts and all that kind of stuff. So without further ado, Surinda, I'll start with, um, just describe the context and the, um, the program you're running before we, we switch to outcome mapping. You're still muted, yeah. Surinda. As I, uh, I told you that uh, MGVS uh, started in 1981 and uh, I joined in uh, 1983. So that time that uh, because the founder of uh, our organization was a missionary from, uh, from America. So that time uh, the way of the, our work was uh, a missionary type, you know, giving services. But uh, at the same time uh, and, and that time, uh, we thought that we will only work, uh, you know, out of skirt of uh, Masuri because um, the founder was, uh, 
he was a principal a international school and he thought that uh, these people have helped this school so why not to help these people so that time our strategy was uh, uh, having a, a big uh, village meeting and then asking people to please uh, make a list of uh, the problems you are facing and then they used to make a big, big list and then then we ask them uh, we used to ask them to so then prioritize which problem is more important for you to solve first then they prioritize and then it become like a 10 point program and then we involve them uh, okay let's find uh, their own solution means where you can you know solve how to solve this problem so this way we used to work and uh, uh, that time uh, we we uh, supported one uh, drinking pipeline it was 3 and 1/2 km then uh, there was one uh, uh, women, uh, for uh, some income generating program for women but the, when the women they got together and they said oh this is not our uh, means uh, needs it means uh, they said we want a school for our children so that uh, swing and knitting uh, room become a, a a primary school that time so so we did that one then uh, after that in 2001 2002 uh, we have uh, we started partnership with tier australia and uh, they accepted our proposal and then uh, from that time uh, after few years later we uh, we uh, we use mica format and the mica format uh, yeah several years we worked in the mica format and uh, uh, there was uh, means it it was uh, more our focus was outputs because uh, the our funding organization they wanted uh, to know uh, how many immunization you did how many toilets you made and how many uh, income generating programs you you are running and like this so the more we were there were outcomes but uh, we were uh, you know uh, we were thought that the outcomes are uh, not you can't see during the uh, during the project period it may comes later stage so we were more on on a, uh, on output output focus so uh, several years we used that mica format and uh, it was uh, there were many uh, benefits of that format it was very i uh, means uh, the activities uh, we used to make very i means uh, uh, very clear and uh, the the time frame for that program uh, the, the timing was there that during this time we have to finish so many many good things but uh, and also uh, through that mica format we have achieved uh, many things uh, immunization and uh, uh, like uh, we introduced some uh, organic farming uh, training program for the midwives and uh, working with disabled people so so many things we we used to do do that one but uh, there was some lacking i think uh, okay. that uh, thanks 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 linda oh. so much to say about that but we'll we'll just cut to 2012 13 when um I got involved and um I was asked, asked to evaluate the program um just tell us about quickly about the evaluation what happened and you introduced the words there output sometime in this tell us what you see as an output versus an outcome yeah outputs are the you know that uh, the activity the immediate results of our activities you know we um, suppose we we hold a meeting then how many people attended that meeting you know and um, how many toilets we we made and uh, how many training programs we run so that is the outputs you know just uh, we we organize a immunization camp and then how many uh, children we immunized like this okay and uh, tell us about the that first evaluation in 2012 13 what do we end up yeah, with Shall I tell about that one? Yeah, not so much about the evaluation. Where did we end up from it? What what happened? Now, just going to share the screen here. Carry, carry on talking, Surinder. Okay. Hello. Yep, we can hear. You. Yeah, select. Okay. Ah, uh, so you know, in two thousand twelve, two thousand thirteen, um, that uh, through the tier Australia, ah, uh, uh, evaluation. Uh, Um, was there and then jack uh, he came as a uh, evaluator and uh, then uh, 
during uh, that evaluation uh, he he was talking with us and uh, uh, and and he said uh, anyway that he was saying that uh, it looks like M mgvs is more focused on outputs outputs and uh, so uh, in uh, during that time he was also talking with me that uh, why you are not focusing on outcomes then i was so surprised because uh, so many years i was also thinking the same why we are not focusing on the changes which we want to see and uh, but uh, we were taught that uh, these changes uh, means uh, it will may come end of the project uh, you know three year project or maybe after project period uh, you may see the changes so when he asked me uh, when he was talking uh, then i said yes we want this then uh, in his uh, jeps uh, uh, evaluation report he recommended uh, to tier australia that uh, it will be good if mgvs uh, be given a, a three more uh, years uh, and uh, and uh, then uh, if they can adopt outcome mapping uh, uh, approach yes thanks surender um james this was a little bit before your time um, but i think you've you've delved back to what happened um how was that um, re evaluation report received in TIA? Yeah, so look, it, it worked out that the time that this evaluation was taking place, we had a process of organisational development going on with MGVS. So this is something that TIA Fund continues to do. We work with our partners to identify key priorities for organisational development or learning. Um, and one of the key things that was coming up was the, this idea that what, what Surrender has been talking about, that there was a very strong focus on outputs in reporting and planning, um, but not so much of a focus on outcomes. Uh, and look, that's something that we were very much in agreement that we would want to focus more on, more looking at the high level outcomes rather than just outputs. And Surrender talked about the MICA template for reporting and, and proposals. Essentially that includes a log frame and look, one challenge that we have with many of our partners is, I, you know, a log frame will push um, so much emphasis on even recording activities as well as outputs. And it requires so much information on those things that there often isn't much room for um, reporting on out, outcome at the outcome level or planning around achieving outcomes. Um, so the evaluation was having an outcome harvest was it was a different type of evaluation than we'd seen before and with it came this um, suggestion to move towards the outcome mapping style uh, project design and look i had a quote from our head of uh, the programs department at the time he basically said this is totally different to every other project we had ever supported so it was a, a very big shift in terms of um, there'd been pressure to move towards looking more at outcomes, but to take an outcome mapping approach to project design, um, yeah, was, was a very big shift. So look, I'm, I'm very glad though that there was um, flexibility in, from the team in how, how that proposal was accepted. Uh, Tier Fund Australia has a, a, a group of um, volunteers who, who form our project approvals committees. So people who have experience in the development sector um, who offer their time um, to review and discuss proposals. Um, and when that, I have the, the minutes from the meeting where this um, proposal was put forward, uh, they, they, they affirmed that it was a refreshing and exciting um, design that they hadn't seen before. Um, and, and there was a recognition that there would be a lot for Tier Fund to learn from this, um, using this approach, almost viewing it as a type of pilot um, project that other partners could learn from. So that was, yeah, that look that was seen as, as a great positive, um, despite some reservations, considering it was a very new approach and a very new type of evaluation we hadn't seen before. Cool, thanks, James. Um, and we, some people may not be familiar with um, outcome mapping. So, then I'll throw the spotlight on you. We're using this word outcome all the time. How do, what's your quick definition of what an outcome is? So, outcome is a change 
in a change in attitude, behavior, and a relationship and policy of individual uh, uh, person or group. That Fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah you, get, you, you get your diploma from the outcome mapping learning community for that. Well done. Um, okay. Um, so we changed to an outcome mapping project. Um, just talk us through how that was for you and your team to change really your way of thinking and your way of reporting and your, your activities. How was it for your team? Um, and most of all, how was it for your community? What did they see that was different? Uh, yeah, so, you know, on the first, I just want to say that uh, um, after that, uh, you know, that uh, just now we are seeing this photo, uh, this picture, and uh, the Jeff also, he uh, gave us, uh, he, you know, that when that we adopted this uh, outcome uh, mapping, that time, the MGVS team, there was not such uh, unity. So, and uh, so the Jeff came and he gave, he run some workshop with us and so, and then uh, the same time that uh, he also uh, some kind of uh, exercise we did. And then after that, we found that it, you know, there was a good unity and uh, through this workshop. And at the same time, he, uh, he explained all about these uh, outcomes and uh, outcome challenges and uh, then uh, and this, uh, this whole, whole approach that time. But uh, it, uh, you know, it's, it is easy to think that a change in a, a attitude, behavior, relationship, or policy of people, but it's very hard, uh, you know, uh, to understand. For in the beginning, it was very hard to understand for MGS team uh, because so many years we 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 did because yeah, for young people maybe uh, easy to understand, but the some people who are working since last ten or twenty years in the in the other way, so a little bit uh, difficult. Like in, uh, so, um, but uh, slowly, slowly, uh, now uh, we think that way. Uh, you know, the, uh, what uh, what are the changes we are bringing? We when uh, and we when we, we 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 work when we make activity, then we think about outcome challenges. You know, like this and uh, yes. So Surinda, that word outcome challenge, some people may not be familiar with outcome mapping. What is an outcome challenge? Yeah, outcome ch challenge is a, is a description uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's, um, it is a, a description of idle situation or idle um, um, attitude, behavior and relationship uh, policy uh, that, we, that we dream or that we want to see, yeah. Fantastic. Okay. And one little thing, just in that. So you changed a lot of change in thinking for you and your team. What about your community? What did they notice that was different? Did they see anything different about NGVS after you, you switched? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so the, yeah, it, because they, they always ex, uh, expect MGVS to support, to, to, to support uh, construct of uh, toilets, to bring the doctors and these, these, these. But here, because uh, in, in the beginning, we share our outcome challenges with community. And uh, so um, there was many village meetings and so they could understand, yeah, now MGVS is not going to support easily. They are going to work on uh, first on change, uh, change in attitude, behavior, relationship and policy. Then now they understand, although it, it, it took long time, yeah. Great. Okay. So, and I think sometime you described it to me as the community noticed that we were working with them. We weren't working with things. We weren't working with toilets. We were working with, with the people themselves. James, what, what about, what about you? So MGVS shifts to outcome mapping and it was experimental and new for tier fund. Um, what was different for you guys in, in supporting that or, an organization doing outcome mapping and reading their reports, et cetera? What, what changed for you guys? Mm. So I think a, a quote that sums it up, quite succinctly is, was where's the log frame? So essentially <laughs> our team had been so used to looking at um, projects that used a log frame that when, when we had this report that didn't look the same, that was the first question. Um, my, my predecessor in this role who was looking after MGVS then talked about how she actually then worked with yourself, Jeff, as well as Surrender, working together to to basically find a middle ground of where there would be a reporting format um, that would be helpful for us in terms of 
the expectations that we have for reporting to our supporters um, to, to help kind of capture in a, in a clear way the, the changes that, that MGVS were seeing in communities. Um, the other thing that you know, my colleague said was in those early days, what she saw was that, that there was a bit of a, a learning curve for MGVS team um, to, to adapt to these new ideas. Um, but after a little while, the team really seemed to get the, the, the idea, the, the way of working in an outcome mapping approach. Um, and then all of a sudden, there were all these wonderful little outcomes coming up from the reports. And the report suddenly became so much richer than the previous reporting that had been supplied. Um, so that was greatly appreciated. Um, another thing that our team noted is that this outcome mapping approach was, was really strongly aligned with a shift um, in tier fund strategies to become more and more focused on um, localization. So, so as much as possible, bringing um, the direction and priorities of development programs back to the local communities rather than being donor driven. Um, and what we really saw was that the, the, the emphasis that outcome mapping was putting and that MGVS was putting on the priorities of the boundary partners and what they wanted to work on um, was really in al alignment with um, the direction that we were heading as an organization as well. So it was greatly appreciated. Um, another nice um, dovetailing that we saw was that uh, one of our partners in Cambodia uh, called PNKS, um, PNKS is Ponlu Ne Kade Sangkum. I might not be pronouncing that correctly at all, um, but PNKS had, had started an outcome mapping project at a very similar time. So that was, there were some good synergies there in terms of cross-learning between the two projects. Um, and we even had the opportunity of organising for uh, Surrender to go and visit Cambodia and see their work. And there was some great cross-learning that happened from that partner's project in Cambodia to MGVS and vice versa. Um, PNKS also appreciated, greatly appreciated the learning they received from uh, the MGVS team visiting. Fantastic, Thank, thanks James. Um, Simon, I can't see the chat box because I'm doing a, a screen share. Are there any questions that have come up that we would like to ask at this point? Uh, no questions so far, uh, just uh, a sort of a, a agreement from uh, Ricky Kuzwadono in Indonesia that um, he recognizes the big challenge as well from shifting from an output to an outcome focus. Thanks, Alan. Okay, and for all of us participants, while we're talking, you're welcome to throw in questions into the chat. You're on, you're on mute, but throw the questions in on the chat and Simon will, will pop up every now and then and if there are questions, he'll ask them. Okay, so Surrender, let's carry on the story. Um, give us a little, tell us what happened. Tell us some stories, what's successes, difficulties, about the changes? Yeah, after we started outcome mapping. Um, yeah. Tell us some of your successes, some things that happened, some things you found really challenging. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, this is, uh, uh, we have to first, uh, first we have to change uh, our own staff, our own field, uh, uh, field work. You know, we, uh, what I, I learned, I, we have to speak uh, the language of uh, outcome challenge in everything, whatever we talk, we have to, uh, then what happened, then what, so this is now because every, we, we, uh, we thought is, it, it will be better if we can, uh, every week, Monday, our team, um, they comes in office and they, uh, they give reporting. And then, uh, and uh, because see, the, the, our, the we, we said the boundary partners. So boundary partners are those who have the similar vision like MGVS, you know, like a panchayat, block office, and uh, self-help groups and uh, schools. And uh, so they all are connected. So when we have a staff meeting, so, you know, if somebody is uh, giving the report on the, his boundary partner, the other one also benefiting and thinking how, um, you know, together how we can, we can make a change. So this is one, so every week uh, we, give reporting and then this is a learning process. Also, we have monthly, um, weekly planning, then monthly meeting also we have. 
you know so then slowly slowly then when we every week we are meeting so they they are getting they are getting the idea of that one you know and uh, also the one thing uh, i we found the we are taught uh, you know so many years to see a big change but the outcome mapping is a uh, really good to find a small change and and celebrate that change and that uh, means be happy okay we made a small change so this is uh, uh, you know this our team uh, they they don't have uh, they didn't have this habit to see but a small change I mean, some girl uh, is saying uh, in a, in meeting she said uh, we said okay first thing the girls uh, here no dreams we are girls we can, but now when mgvs is providing this girls resilience program the girls is started to see the dreams the one girl say saying i want to be a police officer you know in meeting so and then she then i'm said then you want to police officer then what what you are doing then she said no every morning i am i am running so that is a big change but uh, you know sometime we, we don't realize this is a change so uh, we uh, we uh, give we are giving training to our staff to find the changes a small a small a small change even some women were not talking in group but now they started to talk they started to ask question so this uh, kind of uh, change Um, training our staff needed. So a whole lot of li- little changes of behaviour, working together with girls, with women, with panchayats, maybe. Um, any other examples you can give us, Sylvinda? Yeah, see, I will uh, tell you a story. You know what happened? There is a one village, Kasi, and then uh, there was some uh, group meeting, and I was also in that meeting, and uh, they were discussing because these all women were uh, illiterate. So who uh, who Uh, who is going to be secretary you know to keep record because our staff used to uh, keep record but uh, it was not uh, you know it was like a dependency then the one i saw one girls her, uh, was sitting there uh, with her grandma and uh, so i just i was asking uh, what is her name uh, manisha then uh, in which class she is and she was in 8th grade then because every meeting she used to come with uh, with her grandma to attend this uh, so i said why she cannot <laughs> she cannot be your secretary like this and they were they were shock then we asked her see you can write there there you know meeting uh, uh, when they are meeting then she, she can record she said yes i can do that one then uh, we gave her some uh, little uh, initiative but uh, she used and she was so happy and you know what happened then i got a story then uh, she uh, they said she was telling her grandma grandma don't worry now you are taking care me care about me but once i become some officer and once i got a good job i am going to take care of you so see that is the change in her all thinking and you know so that was a big change that's fantastic sarenda <laughs> yeah so um for those of you who don't know india having a disabled 8 year old girl as a secretary of a women's self help group is a really big deal um it's a wonderful story um okay so james we get to 2018 and you guys at tier fund decide you need another evaluation how you how were you thinking about it what did you need you know you've got this project that's a little bit different from most others that you um what were you thinking about how the evaluation should be done who should be doing it what you wanted etc yeah so look i, I found this a, a very um positive experience we looked chatting to surrender he he was very keen to do an outcome harvest as the evaluation um and so he look we had a basically early on a three way conversation um between jeff surrender and myself and just from the start talking together about what the priorities were for the evaluation um what i really liked was that um there was a real focus on hearing the voices of community and particularly even in terms of the evaluation team so i was greatly impressed that it it worked out that we could have some young women from the community as a key part of the evaluation team going into the community um to do this outcome harvest which was brilliant um this was the first time that i had seen an outcome harvest um so a learning uh experience for me as well i when i when i saw and it was explained to me the way that it would take place um i actually loved this idea of in a way approaching the evaluation backwards so to what 
what I would normally understand how it would work. Um, I look always in every other evaluation that I've seen, there's always this tension between um, asking the questions of how much the project can claim contribution or attribution of the you know, activities and outputs that they're doing to, to um, outcomes seen in the community. Um, so personally, I felt that an outcome harvest was a, a great way of actually avoiding that, that issue of actually not putting so much focus on, on what the project was doing, taking a step back and actually asking the question of what, what outcomes were at being seen in the community. Um, so I felt like it was a much more realistic approach to evaluation and, and looking at not assuming that the project is occurring in a vacuum, but actually taking a much more systems uh, approach to evaluation and looking at, yeah, the much broader context around the project um, and, and how changes were occurring in the community. The, the biggest question that I had when we started to talk about the outcome harvest was it, it to me, it seemed like it was going to generate mountains of outcomes that there were, there were it was just going to be, I, I thought well, we're we just going to be overwhelmed by um, the data, by the stories that are coming out. Um, but look, that, that was something that, um, yeah, Jeff was, was able to explain, um, yeah, in a really systematic way that um, that was approached to, to kind of work as a team and nut out how the, the outcomes, the, the most significant um, outcomes that would come up. Um, so that was, yeah, it was, a, it was a great learning experience for me to, to see how that would take place. Thanks, thanks, James. Simon, any questions popped up at this point? Yeah, there's a question uh, from Marianne Smith uh, in Sweden. Uh, how did, and I think this one's for Surrender. Um, so how did your monthly or your uh, weekly regular meetings amongst your team how did they change? And how did your written reporting change um, after you introduced outcome mapping? You just need to unmute, Surrender. Okay. Yeah, so um, we have a, um, yeah, we have a uh, planning, planning, uh, form, uh, planning performer. And in planning, so that uh, this is our, um, 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 this is uh, planning uh, planning form. So first, we uh, we have the outcome challenges. So in every form, you should have uh, have uh, outcome challenges so that whenever they are making plan, they can see the outcome challenges. Then uh, week starting, uh, that is the date. Who is going to uh, do? You know, the name of the staff. Then plan activities. This one, this is the column. Then the other one is with whom. This uh, this activities. You know, with whom. Then expected outputs are there, but hope for outcomes. Then next, then these are the when the teams is, uh, on Monday they they fill this one, but when they finish the week, then there is what actually happened. Then after that, how will how we will look for outcomes? So any activities happen, so the next thing. We, we have to plan here how we are going to see the changes here. And then after that, there is, we have one uh, harvesting. So this is also this harvesting form is, uh, you know, sometimes the changes, uh, suppose this week we, we do some activity, but uh, maybe no change, maybe next week, maybe uh, there is some change of our previous activity, which uh, may be, uh, be done in a, last month or six months ago, or maybe one year ago. So we keep uh, looking the changes, but if we do activities, suppose we, we took uh, some girls for an observation trip, then we have to make plan, means to, to have a, a like, uh, to see the uh, means changes. Then may some, some girls may, may, may have a different idea before going to observation and after that see maybe different. So we have to make plan. How, how we are going to, to ask that girl and maybe in group group or maybe in, we go to school and uh, ask the teachers something. We have to make plan how we are going to see those changes, which we 
which we uh, which we uh, which is in our com challenges and then we made the activities like this and so, maria if i could just jump in there i worked with these guys at that point roughly what serena's saying and what i really saw was a team becoming much more strategic about how they thought about their activities if this works who might change behavior and became much more strategic in their friday meetings about how they looked at their activities they're not looking at did that thing happen they're looking at who changed because because of what, what we did um Sorenda, we're, we're, we're talking about the um, evaluation. Just quickly, in a couple of minutes, could you just explain the actual process? What did we actually do for that in that evaluation? Yeah, so yeah, this one is for me also, this was very uh, different evaluation. I, as uh, James uh, said, uh, we never did our own, uh, own evaluation. Yeah, and it is always, it was a tension, right? Now. Yeah, that is true. So the this uh, I like this uh, evaluation because uh, first uh, Jeff he did uh, a training with our our staff uh, and then uh, we selected some of the like uh, some uh, two young girls uh, from community and also Enam uh, uh, one in Enam and uh, I think one from uh, block office and, uh, so they were in the uh, our evaluation team then we made a list of uh, people whom we are going to uh, to inter interview take interview uh, so it was a, a, a we made a evaluation team and then uh, we made made a many quest questionnaire and uh, and then a list of uh, people whom we are going to ask the questions yeah like that yeah and just a couple of things for guys who aren't in india a and m means um, um, is a district uh, yeah, nurse. Yeah. Um, they're a, a, government, they're a, a government a government nurse, um, and block offices is, is also uh, government services. And the girls that uh, Sarinda is talking about were two amazing fifteen-year-old schoolgirls. So it was wonderful evaluating with local young women. It was just brilliant. Um, okay, so um, James, how was that evaluation received in Tier? What did you guys think? Yeah, the, look, the, the key thing that really stood out to us was the, the systems thinking that took place in the um, evaluation. Look, it was, it was very clear that um, this, this approach of, of going to the different boundary partners and asking about um, the outcomes that it achieved um, was also raising uh, opportunities to think about where broader systems change could take place in these communities. Um, so look, that was, yeah, that was greatly um, appreciated um, in the evaluation. And, and that, that really informed the next design of the um, project phase as well. So the evaluation um, went on to inform a, a, a new three-year proposal. Um, and that, that had this kind of, um, yeah, element of then thinking of the different boundary partners that MGVS is working with, so farmers groups, um, self -help, women self-help groups in the communities, even mm -hmm. the adolescent girls groups, um, ways that they could work together um, to, to benefit their communities. Um, and one of the nice things, one of the, the really nice things that came up was this opportunity to kind of start a almost ecotourism um, program in the target communities. Um, recognizing that there, there is much natural beauty in the area as well as it's a, a kind of pilgrimage location. Um, so yeah, that, that was a great opportunity that MGVS could help kind of facilitate relationships between the boundary partners to work towards. Um, I think obviously the COVID situation has, has somewhat limited that at this stage with you know, limited travel opportunities within India. Um, but yeah, hope that hopefully that'll be something that can can get back off the ground in, in coming months. Um, another thing that kind of came out of that um, evaluation is that when we're sharing back to the team about this, you know, this outcome harvest, what the um, what the results were and the, the learnings from the evaluation, um, there was real interest from our broader team and that eventually resulted in us organizing for Jeff to come over and do a kind of workshop with the team 
Um, so focused on outcome mapping, outcome harvesting, um, as well as complexity and working in, in, in complex environments. Um, that, that really helped to serve, to, to kind of demystify the outcome harvesting and outcome mapping approach for the rest of our programs team. So it was greatly appreciated. And actually, even in, in the last week that I've been reminded um, of the benefit of that, that workshop, we had one of our uh, partners in Afghanistan um, is doing a project that is working with, um, that they do a lot of work with uh, women who have um, survived abuse. Um, and so their project is, as well as working with survivors of abuse, they've got a, a, a program which is actually looking at the government systems um, to support women who have experienced abuse. Um, and it's, it, it's essentially looking at reviewing the, the justice system, reviewing the, the shelter programs that the government maintains. Um, but when we we're talking about this program uh, that the, this, our partner in Afghanistan had put forward, um, one of our team raised this question around a really good way to look at the, um, to encourage this partner to look at the outcomes would be kind of using the outcome mapping approach of asking questions around what would you love to see, what would you like to see, or what would you hope to see in this, um, in this project? So not, it's, not a, it's not using a strict outcome mapping approach in the project, um, but taking that learning from uh, the workshop that Jeff did with us, uh, it's, it's a, a potential way of um, using some of the, the ideology behind outcome mapping to really strengthen the reporting and planning of this project. So, yeah. Thanks, James. Um, and that's probably a, a good point to just move away a little bit from MGVS and look a little bit at outcome mapping. Surinda, what would you say just in outcome mapping, what are the big, big things that you've really liked? What has it brought to MGVS? Um, Yeah, so um, uh, I think for out, uh, for outcome uh, approach for me is is it really uh, is a uh, is is a um, it is a, a full definition of a uh, of a development, you know, and uh, is a deeper deeper changes in uh, which will remain, uh, which is the sustain, which will be sustained for me because is the, the outcome. Uh, outcome mapping is a uh, not only change, but it uh, it uh, it is it is making it is a uh, it is a um, creating a culture of change. Culture of change that uh, that culture will remain even we 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 will be not there, but the, that changes will take place. So for me, is a is a it is a uh, it is a right approach for community development or rural development. Yes. Thanks, Surinder. James, what about you in terms of um, as a funding organization um, supporting an outcome-based, a behavior change-based um, approach? Um, what are the biggest benefits and challenges for, the, for you guys and, and Tia with that? Mm. So look, first of all, very much agree with Surrender. It, it's really clear looking at the way that MGVS works, that it's a sustainable way of working, that um, working towards these behavior changes Will will have longer lasting benefits to the communities. Um, the other thing that that I, I've really seen, and that this has also been touched on before, is it, I think it's made MGVS a much more reflective organisation. So really thinking about the way that the project is working and 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 trying to learn from um, what's happening. Um, so yes, Arenda has talked about the the weekly meetings that the team have. Um, and it's clear to me that it's a really, it's a way of really being responsive to the local context, to changes that they're seeing in the local context, um, which is a real strength of this work um, that we've greatly appreciated. When, when I think about the challenges, look, it's a, it's a small challenge, but one of the um, things that our communications team likes to do is to tally up numbers across our entire program. Um, and they'll pr present it as a sort of infographic. 
in our reports. Um, so for example, they might do something like saying that there were 100 water points um, constructed across 20 countries um, or something like that. It, it, it doesn't quite work for, for the way MGBS works um, to, to just neatly slot numbers into that um, program. Saying that, I can still go through the, the reports that Surrender will send for MGBS and, and find some kind of numbers to report on if our communications seem really desperate for that. Um, but saying that, I, I would say that there are greater strengths in the reporting um, that, that comes through. So, you know, I mean, Surrender's already touched on some of these amazing stories. And, and a story that really touched, that really stuck out in my mind from a recent report was um, a, a person with a disability who had, in recognising that the, the, the entitlements that they were able to achieve from the, the government, had then gone out and started to assist other people with disabilities in their community. Um, and so it's a kind of a, a, an, an ongoing um, support that will continue to, to benefit other people with disability and that they'd become a kind of champion for people with disability. Um, a report that would just say, you know, number of people with disabilities <laughs> trained or something would give, would not give us anywhere near as rich a story as that outcome did from that report. Um, so yeah, that there are, there are ways that we can get around that challenge. Thanks, James. Um, okay, just one more question for each of you. Surenda, imagine you've got a program manager from the global south, Cambodia or Brazil or Burkina Faso or somewhere, um, about your size program, and she's thinking of changing from a log frame to an outcome mapping program. What would you tell her? What would you tell her to might be good? What would you tell her to watch out for or you need to take a bit of time to focus on? You're, you're muted, Surinda. My, uh, you know, almost like 40 years of, in this field, I will say, please go ahead with the, uh, this outcome mapping approach and uh, see uh, what is the, the good, is a, is a exciting, uh, it's a very exciting activities because we dream, you know, these are the, uh, means we want to see uh, our, our, like uh, our, our panchayat. Uh, okay, I will read just a little bit, you know. So these are the outcome challenges, uh, suppose, uh, you know, panchayat, local self-government, right? Yeah, the panchayat is uh, an in, uh, institution proud of its role and the quality of its work. And uh, it is import, uh, important in the overall development of uh, Nogun Party. It is a transparent and non-discrimination organization. Okay, so this is, we want to see this attitude with panchayat. So it's very fantastic that we have to dream how to, to do, how to work with them. So it's, it is, it means uh, it, we dreams about the development. Okay, I will do this way, I will do this way. So there is, I will do one activity. Maybe the, I, um, this activity not very effective. So there is chances you can change and you can do other way. So we, there is, we have a, we, we can change our strategies, you know, but there is a dream, dreaming, dreaming, dreaming. And so is is no, just activity and then finish. No, sometime, you know, that I want to see this panchayat, but it's so, okay. Even at, I'm at my home in office, wherever I am, but it's still the dream going on in, in just in my mind. So it's very good, exciting. You see, I'm 60 years, more than 60 years, but I am still excited to work uh, through this approach. So that I will say. You sound yeah. like an 18 year old actually. Um, <laughs> I will say James, yes, please. You're, 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 you're raving. Um, James, um, similar question for you. If you have one of your partners, one of the projects you support that's currently on micro format or something and they want to shift over, what are you thinking about? What projects are, do you think are appropriate for outcome mapping? What do you want to put in place to help it be successful? What do you need to watch out for? Hmm. So I would say primarily for projects that are focused on behaviour change or broader systems change, I, I would see those as um, being a more obvious fit for outcome mapping. 
look at whether that means um, behaviour change in terms of inclusion for people with disabilities, um, changing community attitudes and stigma, or whether that's at a, at a higher level advocacy to government of trying to see changes in government systems. I think there's a really obvious fit there. Where, where a partner would be more focused on, um, say, water and sanitation, uh, probably um, less, less kind of, uh, yeah, application in a way. Um, but actually still benefit because it's still going to be beneficial to think about whether those water and sanitation programs are actually making positive changes in people's lives. Um, rather than just ticking, <laughs> ticking off the numbers. Um, the biggest challenge that I see is actually around co-funding. So um, if there are other donors that are supporting partners that um, have, a, have a really strict requirement around reporting in a, in a, in a set um, framework, like in a kind of log frame way, I think it's then can be a real challenge for partners to, if we were expecting them to run almost parallel systems where um, they were having to meet donor requirements in, in terms of reporting all, all the log frame expectations and then also run a kind of outcome harvesting um, method of reporting, that, that would be a real challenge in terms of just adding to the workload for, for partners. Um, saying that, uh, look, I mentioned earlier, this partner in Afghanistan that's doing the, looking at reviewing the government systems around um, uh, women who have survived abuse, um, that, that does kind of on a very basic level use a log frame. However, there, there's been a way of, of tweaking that to really strengthen the outcomes um, section of that log frame. Um, so there, there are ways I, I see to, to kind of marry the two um, where it's not because of other donors, for example, it wouldn't be possible to go to a, a kind of a more traditional um, outcome mapping approach. Cool. Thanks so, thanks so much. Surinda and James, that's been fantastic. I kind of dive into how it happens and, and what happens. We've just got a little bit of time here. Um, Simon, are there any, any um, questions uh, come up? We've got a few minutes. Um, well, there was a question from uh, uh, Giotti Chapai, uh, actually just in relation to what you were just saying, James. Um, Giotti asks, uh, it, how can we reduce double reporting when we're asked to report using log frames? Um, so we want to use outcome mapping, but we're being asked to report in a log frame. Uh, is there any way we can fill in outcome mapping changes into the log frame format? So could I, uh, could I just uh, jump I'm in? I'm going to share a couple of resources because this is a common question for outcome mapping. Yeah, and I'll just jump in and answer that. Or from my point of view, an evaluator or a consultant, I think, has a special, we have a special relationship with funders and programs and stuff. And I think that falls a little bit in, a, in our ambit as well. We, we start talking to projects and, and to their funders. Yeah, Simon, any other questions? Um, not right now, no. Great. We, okay. we have time for um, uh, one or two more, if well, one more probably, if, if someone wants to squeeze in there. Yeah, so um, we'll, we'll just give it, a, give it a couple of minutes. Surrender or James, any last comments you guys would like to make? Well, look, one comment from my side. Um, look, it's been so good to, to see the way that MGVS work and to, to learn from them in their outcome mapping approach. There, there's an unfortunate... Um, situation that Tier Fund, well, that I have in Tier Fund at the moment, in that our organisation is actually strategically moving away from funding in India. Um, Looking as a result of that, um, unfortunately, we've had to say to MGVS that over pretty much over the next two years, we'll, we'll be phasing out of our, our supporting them. It is in no way a reflection of our uh, the way that MGVS work and our relationship with MGVS. Um, <laughs> it would be, if we weren't making that strategic shift away, we would very much wish to continue supporting this excellent project. 
Um, and as we've talked about, look, that they are such a reflective organization that is committed to learning and improving and recognizing changes in the context. Um, so it, look, it's just an opportunity for anyone on the call who represents an organization that's more of a, a donor agency. Um, look, there's a great little organization there in Northern India that you may be able to support. So I would yeah, highly recommend that if it's a possibility for you. Thanks, James. Surrender, any final comment from you? Yeah, <clears throat> so yeah, I would like to also say first thing, thank you so much, uh, James, for Tier Australia, supporting us so many years and still supporting uh, uh, for I think for up to next year. Uh, but I also want to say thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, just uh, introducing this uh, outcome <laughs> mapping approach to MGVS. And uh, so uh, really, I'm so happy with that. I want to just uh, add one thing. This outcome mapping approach, you know, not only we see who did what new behavior, but we also, are, uh, also uh, there is a column for how this uh, new behavior change so not a small uh, change as we are looking, but through these small changes, we also look a big change. We are looking at bigger changes. The small change can change, can make a big change. So that is also, I like that idea also, you know, dreaming. Yeah. So thank you so much from <laughs> on behalf of MGVS. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you both Surinda and James from ourselves at Outcome Mapping, but also to all, all, the, all the listeners. I'm sure you appreciated them being honest and telling, telling stories. Thank you all for coming. Um, and if you're interested, have a look at the um, outcome mapping website. The, we do have other webinars coming, coming up and some are deep dives into small topics, others are, are big picture things. Um, we, we just love talking about the stuff we do, we enjoy it.